good morning all welcome to online session of uh, maxwell's equation uh, i'm dr sadanand kumar assistant professor department of physics aj institute of engineering and technology mangaluru in today's session i'm going to talk about uh, gauss law of electrostatics gauss divergence theorem stokes theorem biot savart's law and some numericals related to the biot savart's law and these topics in the study material covered from the page number 8 to 12 so when we uh, talk about gauss law of uh, divergence or the gauss law of uh, electrostatics so we should know the concept of uh, flux or the electric flux and also the faraday law of electric flux so we have studied about the flux as well as the flux density in the previous session so definition of the flux is the number of lines of force passing normally to the surface that's the definition for flux then flux density is the lines number of lines of force crossing the unit area normally in other words if vector d is the uh, flux density then flux per unit area is the uh, flux density now once if you know the uh, flux density or the concept of the flux one can define the faraday law of electrostatics according to the faraday the number of lines of force emanating or diverging from a charge is directly proportional to the quantity of charge enclosed by i repeat the faraday law of electrostatics is the number of lines of force emanating or diverging from a charge is directly proportional to the quantity of charges now gauss uh, took the uh, postulates of the uh, faraday's laws in other words gauss quantified the faraday's uh, postulates on electric flux the this gauss law or gauss theorem which is used to evaluate the electric uh, intensity at a point due to a asymmetric charge distribution in other words in the gaussian surface now the statement uh, for the gauss law of electrostatics states that the total electric flux over a closed surface is equal to the charge enclosed by the surface suppose if uh, the electric flux over a uh, closed surface that is surface integral of uh, vector d dot vector ds and uh, total uh, charge enclosed by the surface is q you can write the surface integral of vector d dot vector ds is equal to q which means it's a dot product vector d dot vector ds dot product of uh, electric flux density and the area that will gives rise to the total charge so this is the statement of the gauss law of electrostatics now let us explain the gauss law of electrostatics by considering a, a spherical surface imagine a point charge say q which is kept at the origin of a sphere of radius r which is shown in the slide let the flux density passing normally through this surface be vector d that's nothing but the flux density passing through the surface normally okay a closed sphere of any shape can be imagined surrounding the charges and this uh, surface is called the gaussian surface in other words any surface in which the charges are distributed uniformly are called gaussian surface now the total uh, electric flux uh, leaving the entire spherical surface that is phi is equal to uh, surface integral of vector d ds so in this particular expression you need to understand the vector d dot vector ds that will gives rise the flux density of the uh, elemental surface ds so which means the entire surface area of the sphere is uh, made up of the elemental surfaces ds so first you have to evaluate the flux through the elemental surface ds that will gives rise to vector ds dot ds 
when you integrate this particular value over the surface it will give rise to the total flux leaving the entire spherical surface that is phi is equal to surface integral of vector d dot vector ds now from the definition of the flux density uh, it is flux for unit area in this particular uh, uh, case we can uh, write the expression for flux density as q by 4 phi r square into a n cap Yeah. Therefore, the phi is equal to, you can substitute that uh, uh, vector uh, I mean electric flux density in the expression, the phi is equal to surface integral of q by 4 pi r square into a n cap into vector d s. Now, uh, phi is equal to q by 4 pi r square surface integral of vector d dot vector a n cap, which means I have taken the the constant term outside the surface integral. All right. Now, uh, surface integral of uh, vector d s dot a uh, a n cap that will gives rise to the surface area of the sphere. So, surface area of the sphere is four pi r square. Therefore, I can write surface integral of the vector d s uh, dot a n cap that will give rise to 4 phi r square. You just uh, substitute in the expression uh, surface integral of uh, d s uh, dot a n cap as 4 phi r square. Therefore, the 4 phi r square, 4 phi r square cancels each other. Uh, therefore, phi is equal to q. So, which means uh, uh, total uh, flux through the surface is equal to total charge enclosed by the surface. Therefore, uh, Gauss law of electrostatics is proved. A differential form of the Gauss law. Uh, in, uh, in case of the differential form of the Gauss law, the divergence of electric uh, displacement density in a medium at a point is equal to the charge per unit volume at the same point. So, mathematically one can write the divergence of vector d is equal to rho v. So, this is happened to be a first uh, 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 law of Maxwell's under static fields or static cut conditions. So, I repeat the differential form of Gauss law, the divergence of the electric displacement density in a medium at a point is equal to the charge per unit volume at the same point. So, mathematically divergence that is a del dot vector d that means the divergence of the electric flux density that is equal to rho v, rho v is the volume charge density. Alright, the statement is written in the mathematical form. Next uh, concept is uh, Gauss divergence theorem. So, statement of the theorem is the integral of the normal component of the flux density over any closed surface in an electric field is equal to the volume integral of the divergence of the flux throughout the space enclosed by the surface. So, this statement is too long if you are going to listen, but you need to understand uh, there are two parts here. The first thing is the uh, flux density over a closed surface and which is equal to the volume integral of the divergence of the flux density. So, these two are equal that is all the uh, Gauss divergence theorem. So, mathematically you can write the expression for the Gauss divergence theorem as so that is a, a dot product of the flux density over a elemental uh, surface area uh, surface integral of that is equal to divergence of a flux density in the volume integrals. Uh, flux density over a closed surface is equal to divergence of the flux density enclosed by the volume that is what the meaning. So, same thing as written in terms of equation. So, I repeat the Gauss divergence theorem the integral of normal component of the flux density over any closed surface in an electric field is equal to the volume integral of the divergence of the flux throughout the space enclosed by the surface. So, uh, surface integral of vector d dot ds is equal to volume integral of divergence of the vector d to ds. 
and please remember where d is the uh, flux density and ds is the uh, elemental area which we have considered and dv is the elemental volume. Now the explanation for this uh, Gauss divergence theorem. For that let me consider the Gaussian surface enclosing a charges q. So you know what is Gaussian surface, a surface in which charges are distributed uniformly. Such an surface is considered to explain this. Let uh, uh, charge q uh, and also the rho v is the volume charge density of the Gaussian surface. And let uh, uh, vector d is the electric flux density. Imagine a, a differential uh, volume element delta v. So corres corresponding uh, the charge will be the delta q that is within the elemental volume. So I repeat let delta v is the elemental volume which is considered in the uh, Gaussian surface. So in that the charges enclosed are delta q. In other words, charge enclosed in the elemental volume is delta q. So that is uh, shown in the figure. Now suppose if uh, rho is the uh, charge density, it can uh, vary continuously in the volume. Rho is the obviously the charge density in the uh, given volume. Then uh, it can be uh, very continuously in the volume. Then the volume charge density rho v can be written as limit delta v tends to 0 uh, open bracket delta q by delta v. In other words that is dq by dv or dq equal to rho into dv. That is a simple uh, mathematics there. So if q is the uh, total charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface then q equal to integral of dq that is equal to volume integral of rho v dv. So in other words the q equal to volume integral of rho v dv where rho v is the volume charge density and dv is the elemental volume what we have considered that is nothing but the total charge enclosed by the surface that is the meaning. Now we know that the divergence of vector d is equal to rho v just to substitute the in place of rho v as a divergence of uh, vector d and uh, uh, Q will become the volume integral of the divergence of vector d into dv. Now by applying the Gauss law of uh, Gauss law of electrostatics, now surface integral of vector d ds is equal to q. Now from the equation number 1 and 2, I have uh, called the equation number 1 and 2 there that is volume integral of uh, divergence of vector d as uh, vector dv is equal to 1 I mean, that means equation number 1 and uh, the second equation that is uh, q equal to surface integral of vector d and vector ds uh, that is equal to equation number 2. So now from the equation number 1 and 2 you can write uh, the surface integral of uh, vector d dot vector ds is equal to volume integral of divergence of vector d into dv. So I have uh, equated the right hand sides of the equation number 1 and 2 that will give rise to the same uh, term charge q. Okay. So hence uh, the Gauss divergence theorem is proved. Stokes uh, theorem the next concept. Now Stokes theorem provides the relationship between the line integral of the surface and the surface integrals if there is a curl of a vector existing in a vector field. So Stokes theorem it relates the uh, relation between line integral and the surface integral if there is a curl of a vector exist in a vector field. Statement of Stokes theorem and it says that the curl of a vector over a surface is equal to the line integral of vector along the line enclosing the surface. That mathematically one can write the surface integral of curling of vector h into ds is equal to line integral of vector h dot dl. That means dot product of the electric flux. In fact, sorry, it is a magnetic flux dot the elemental length. So 
So mathematically, surface integral of curl h ds is equal to line integral of vector h dot vector dl. Now uh, consider the area, I mean consider the curl of vector h at each point in a vector field as shown in the figure. Sum of all these uh, curls within the chosen surface, this sum will be equal to the circulation of the vector h around the boundary of the chosen surface. So that you can uh, see in the uh, picture, so arbitrary surface is chosen and uh, curling of vector h with the arrow mark is shown. So what happens if you consider the uh, total curling of a vector h at each point, okay, that will be equal to along the boundary of the surface. Uh, sum of the, the these curling vectors that will be equal to sum of the uh, curling vector at the boundary of the surface. That is the uh, information provided by the Stokes theorem. Next, uh, Biot Savard's law. The law gives the information uh, about uh, both magnitude and direction of the magnetic field intensity at a point due to the current carrying uh, current, sorry, current carrying element, in fact, or the differential element, current carrying element or a current carrying differential element. So let AB is a conductor of length L which carries the current uh, I. Consider a elemental length DL at a point O on the conductor which is shown in the slide. Let P be a point chosen arbitrary and the distance OP is equal to R. The angle between the uh, tangent drawn to the elemental length and the OP that is theta. So now with this data one can uh, define the biot savard's law. Statement of the law is the magnitude of the magnetic uh, field, in other words magnetic field intensity at a point uh, uh, due to the current carrying element is directly proportional to the parameter like current and also directly proportional to magnitude of the length of the current carrying uh, element and sign of the angle between the tangent drawn to the sorry uh, tangent drawn to the current element and the position vector and uh, it is inversely proportional to the square of the, dis the square of uh, distance between the two points in fact point and the element inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the point and the current element. So now mathematically you can write if dh is the magnetic field intensity vector dh is proportional to i dl sin theta divided by r square. It's a mathematical form of biot savards law. Now what happens three parameters which are directly related. So directly relating parameter will increases the magnetic field strength whereas inversely related parameter will decrease the strength of the magnetic uh, intensity. All right. Now you remove the proportionality sign, you will get one uh, constant called proportionality constant. I will call it as k. Therefore, uh, d vector dh is equal to k ideal sin theta divided by r square. Now this k is equal to mu naught by 4 phi. It's a property of the medium. So where mu naught, mu is the property of the me, uh, medium, so we call it as the permeability of the free space. Mu naught is the permeability of the free space. The value of the mu naught is, it is uh, 10 power minus 7 into 4 pi, 4 pi into 10 power minus 7. 7 uh, Tesla or Weber per meter square. Now the uh, magnetic field intensity that is vector dh is equal to ideal sin theta divided by 
4 pi r square that will be the expression for uh, magnetic field intensity according to the biot saverts law. Now since the since the direction of the vector uh, dh at a point at a point uh, as per the law it is uh, perpendicular to the plane containing the tangent drawn to the element and the line joining the point. The element and it is directed along the direction of the uh, progress of the right handed uh, screw. So uh, dh is expressed as vector notation. So the biot savets law is vector dh is equal to ideal into vector ar cap divided by 4 pi r square. So in this situation since it is uh, follows the right hand uh, uh, right hand screw rule uh, from dl to the line joining to the element so theta will be turned as 90 degrees therefore sin theta will be disappears and the directional vector introduces that is a r cap so you know that uh, how to evaluate uh, vector a r cap that is a uh, vector r divided by magnitude of the vector r will give rise to vector a r cap now in this expression you know the dl is directed along the direction of the current and the air cap is the unit vector already have explained okay now let us see one or two problems uh, from the biot savets law as well as the electric field intensity problem number 1 the uh, point charge q equal to 30 uh, nano coulomb is located at the origin in the cartesian coordinates find the electric flux uh, density and the electric field intensity at bracket 1,3 comma minus 4. So here in this particular problem they have uh, given the charge Q equal to 30 nano coulomb. Nano means 10 power minus 9 coulombs at origin. Origin means the coordinates x1, y1, z1 coordinate is 0, 0, 0. That is a one point we need to remember and electric field intensity you are supposed to determine at uh, the coordinates uh, x2, y2 z2 that is 1 comma 3 comma minus 4 also you are uh, able to determine the the electric flux density that is vector d at the same uh, uh, coordinate point so i have uh, uh, shown the uh, information given in the problem in the slide like a uh, uh, point charge q at one particular point and the other point p separation between the uh, point charge q and the point P. So that will be R, in other words vector R. The direction of this vector is A R cap and the coordinate I have just mentioned at the point P that is 1 comma 3 comma minus 4. Now first evaluate uh, the directional vector A R cap by using the uh, coordinates that is a uh, charge coordinate as well as the another point P where we supposed to determine the the electric intensity or the flux density, electric flux density at that point. So vector r uh, is equal to a x cap open bracket x1 minus y1 plus a y cap x2 minus y2 plus a z cap x3 minus y3. So if you substitute that uh, uh, x1 y1 z1 and x2 y2 z values it is 1 minus 0 into a x cap plus 3 minus 0 a y cap plus 4 min minus 4 minus 0 a z cap in turn you will get vector r is equal to a x cap plus 3 a y cap minus 4 a z cap the modulus of the vector r equal to square root of uh, square root of 1 square plus 3 square plus 4 square which means I have taken the magnitude of the vector r. So that means in the x term there is one uh, magnitude is 1 the y term magnitude is 3 and uh, third one that is the z term magnitude is 4. If you take the square root of that it will be square root of 26. And uh, now you can write the expression for uh, uh, vector a r cap that is vector r divided by modulus of vector r. So that is equal to AX cap plus uh, 3AY cap minus 4AZ cap divided by square root of 26 
we solve the uh, directional vector or the unit vector in the expression. Now the electric field at a point P due to Q is uh, vector E is equal to Q by 4 pi epsilon naught R square into A R cap. This is the expression for electric uh, field. So uh, vector E is equal to Q is a uh, charge 30 into 10 power minus 9 coulombs divided by 4 pi epsilon naught that is 8.854 into 10 power minus 12. That is a permittivity of the free space value given as 8.854 into 10 power minus 12 and uh, R square uh, it is the square root of 26 whole square because we got uh, r is equal to square root of 26 into ar cap value uh, in the previous step we have evaluated the ar cap just substitute in the uh, expression so which is equal to uh, 10.375 open bracket ax cap plus 3y cap minus 4az cap divided by square root of 26 so you you divide this square root of 26 to the 10.37 it will results 2.034 open bracket ax cap plus 3ay cap minus 4az cap that much volt per meter this is the uh, answer for the electric intensity of the electric field uh, modulus of the electric intensity that is equal to vector e divided by ar cap that is equal to 10.375 volt per meter. Now next step is uh, electric flux density at P due to charge Q. Uh, that is the expression for the electric uh, flux density vector D is equal to epsilon naught vector E that is equal to epsilon naught open bracket Q by 4 pi epsilon naught R square A R cap. Therefore uh, you can uh, directly substitute epsilon naught into the whatever the value you have got for the electric field intensity previously or else step by step you can substitute either way it is correct now i'll go for the individual substitution to understand the calculation steps therefore vector d is equal to q by 4 phi r square into a r cap is equal to 30 uh, that's the charge uh, value of the charge and, uh, and uh, uh, 4 phi into r square r square is nothing but a square root of 26 whole square where epsilon naught epsilon naught cancels each other then a r cap is retaining and a r cap value is also there you can uh, substitute in this expression that will be yielding uh, vector d is equal to 9.18 into 10 power minus 11 uh, into open bracket a x cap plus 3 a y cap minus 4 a z cap divided by square root of 26. So this will be the expression for vector d nothing but electric flux density. Now vector d is equal to 1.8 into 10 power minus 11 open bracket a x cap plus 3 a y cap minus 4 a z cap. So this is the final answer for flux density that is coulomb per meter square. So in the uh, previous step there is a uh, dividing of uh, square root of 26 uh, that value you have to divide to the 9.18 it will yield 1.8 into 10 power minus 11 then the remaining the position vectors along x y z that you are supposed to write in the expression so that is the answer for flux density at a point p to 1 comma 1 comma 3 comma uh, minus 4 ok now the modulus of vector d is equal to vector d divided by the unit vector r or the position vector r that is equal to 9.18 into 10 power minus 11 coulomb per meter square. Just you are supposed to uh, so divide the vector d by the AR cap. If you do that it will be 9.18 into 10 power minus 11 coulomb per meter square. So that is the answer for the problem. Next one more problem it is related to the Boyd's Saved's law. An infinitesimal length 10 power minus 3 meter of wire is located at the point 1 comma 0 comma 0 and carries a current 2 ampere in the direction of the unit vector Ax cap. Find the magnetic field intensity due to the current element at a point 0 comma 
टू कॉमा टू लेट ए आर बी दी यूनिट वैक्टर इन डायरेक्शन अलॉन्ग दी लाइन जॉइनिंग डी एल टू पी वेर आर इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन करंट एलिमेंट एंड दी पॉइंट पी नो एज पर दि बॉयड सेवेट्स लॉ दि मैग्नेटिक फील्ड इंटेंसीटी डी वैक्टर डी हेच इज ईक्वल टू म्यू नॉट बै फोर फाइव इंटू ई डी एल डिवाइड बै आर् स्क्वे इंटू आर् कैप और ए आर् कैप Now, using the coordinate values, you can uh, find out uh, the vector r as well as the magnitude of the vector r. In turn, you can evaluate the uh, a r cap. So, just you can take up the uh, origin in the sense, I mean, uh, x value. That means a x cap value is one comma zero comma zero. Then another point which is located at zero comma two comma two. These are the coordinate values. You take this uh, x one y one z one. That is one comma zero comma zero and z zero comma two comma two. That is x two y two z two values. Now what you can do is uh, you can uh, uh, take the value of vector r. That is equal to uh, open bracket zero minus one a x cap plus two minus zero a y cap plus two minus zero a z cap. That will yields minus a x cap plus two a y cap plus two a z cap. And magnitude of that is that is a uh, square root of zero minus one whole square plus two minus zero whole square plus two minus zero whole square. That will be uh, three. That means uh, magnitude of the vector r is three. Now unit vector uh, or directional vector a r cap is vector r divided by modulus of vector r. That is equal to minus a x cap plus two a y cap plus two a z cap divided by three. Then uh, d h uh, cap that is nothing but the electric field intensity is equal to mu not uh, i d i divided by 4 pi r square into a x cap into a r cap that a x cap because of the direction of the that charge you can see in the uh, figure that a unit uh, direction of the a x cap that's along x directions uh, in other words the elemental length that is uh, marked at the coordinate 1 0 0 and the direction of that is a x cap along x directions that you need to be considered in the expressions so you can come back to this uh, uh, expression that is a x cap into directional result into directional vector so substitute uh, mu not by 4 5 uh, that is equal to 10 power minus 7 in other words mu not is equal to 4 5 into 10 power minus 7 from that data I wrote mu not by four phi as ten power minus seven, and I is given two amps and uh, elemental length is ten uh, power minus three meters, and R square is three square, okay, R value is three. Then A X cap open bracket A R cap is minus A X cap plus two A Y cap plus two A Z cap uh, open bracket I mean uh, close bracket divided by three. Okay, since uh, I have given that why I am writing uh, uh, mu not by four phi is equal to ten power minus seven. All right. Now, if you simplify that, you will get two uh, into ten power minus ten by nine, and uh, open bracket and a x cap into minus of a x cap plus a x cap into two a y cap plus a x cap into two a z cap. You are cross multiplying, so you have to take the cross product of these unit vectors. So what happens if you take the take the uh, cross product of these unit vectors, uh, a x cap into a x cap, that will uh, results zero. This uh, uh, discussions we have uh, seen in the previous uh, session. So a x cap into a y cap, that is two a y cap, that will be yields two a z cap, and uh, a x cap into two a z cap, that is equal to minus two a y cap. So, if you substitute uh, that uh, uh, data or the resulting unit vectors in the uh, expression, the dh vector dh is equal to 0.22 into 10 power minus 10 one bracket 0 plus 2 az cap minus 2 ay cap close bracket. So, vector dh is equal to uh, 0.44 into 10 power minus 
uh, AZ cap minus AY cap ampere per meter. So in the previous step there are uh, uh, 2 is a common term inside the bracket you take it outside and multiply it hence you got the uh, intensity of the magnetic field is equal to 0.44 into 10 power minus 10 open bracket AZ cap minus AY cap close bracket ampere per meter this is the answer for the problem. For the uh, today's class I will stop here and I will continue in the next session. Thank you.